Hello students, so as promised week two, a little bit sooner than um, I brought you week one. Um, so for week two, we're going to be focusing on the Counseling for Social Justice book. Um, and so you are not required to purchase this book. Um, the readings are posted on um, Canvas because there's only a few chapters in this text that we're going to be reading. And so I didn't want you to have to purchase a whole textbook. Um, for a few chapters um, in addition to paying for the bigger textbook. But this is a really great book. It is by the wonderful, amazing um, Portland Lee. And um, if you're interested in it, um, I, would, I would highly recommend it. There's some really great chapters that unfortunately we are gonna be skipping this semester um, focused on counseling for structural and cultural transformation and um, perspectives for counseling in schools. So those of you who are um, school counselors advocating for decent work, um, LGBTQQI, um, we're gonna be reading those two chapters. Then there's sexism, immigration, xenophobia, um, neuroscience, and then if you're um, interested in doing research or um, teaching in the future, it has chapters on those as well. So. Um, just a really great book. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Um, and so if you're interested, something that you can think about for later. But for this, um, for week two, we're going to be reading three of the chapters. And again, they, they are pretty short um, chapters. So the first one is chapter one, which is counselors as agents of social change or social justice. And so it's really talking about um, the ways in which social justice has become a critical or crucial concept in the theory and practice of counseling. Um, and so it talks about why that's important and how that's important and kind of how it came to be. And so it goes into the globalization of counseling in a world of savage inequalities. Um, and it spends a couple pages really highlighting just some of the issues that have gone on um, either historically or currently um, in it separates it between um, continents, um, sort of. Um, but it breaks it down in a few areas. And obviously, these couple pages are not exhaustive list, um, but just kind of highlight some of the injustices that are going on around the world. One of the things that Cortland Lee does, um, he he's not currently, but um, he was the past president of the International um, Counseling Association, and. Um, has done a ton of work with um, other branches of counseling associations um, in different countries and things like that. And um, so this definitely has a global perspective to it. And, um, you know, he talks about different ways that this kind of shows up. And, um, you know, the context is, contexts that it shows up in, um, it gives a little bit of information on the story of Malala. Um, you you may already know her, um, you know, or of her, but um, her story is definitely inspiring and it just gives you a little glimpse of that um, and how important it is, the work that, that she has done and continues to do. It gives a good definition of what social justice is and what it means for the counseling profession. And so this is really important because it is one of our um, one of the responsibilities we have as a counselor is to do advocacy work and to be um, allies for our clients. And so it gives an idea of that. Um, it also gives a conceptual overview of, of what this looks like in practice. And so it talks about um, the use of empowerment and how um, that is important, the work of um, advocacy and also um, our role as agents of social change. Um, at the end of the chapter, it gives references for the materials in the chapter. There's a ton of them so that if you want to look into anything further, you have that information. Um, and so moving forward, we're just going to be this week reading then chapters 12 and 15. And so for 12, it talks about social justice and counseling ethics, which is really important because we need to make sure that we're always acting in an ethical manner, but um, especially when it comes to social justice work, making sure that those two things tie in together. And when we are acting as agents of social justice, um, we would be acting in an ethical manner. And when we're being ethical, we essentially are um, working towards social justice and, and just really um, recognizing the connection between these, these two areas. 
Um, and so social justice encompasses the professional and moral responsibility of counselors to address barriers that are oppressive or harmful to others, particularly those who have been systemically excluded from the benefits of society. And so I really love how Lee, um, you know, puts that and, um, you know, highlights how important this is um, for us to start to, to learn and, and to work on. Um, both ethics and social justice are intended to promote human welfare while preventing harm. Um, so it kind of starts the chapter, it talks about um, the ways that we can be helpers within the context of the roles that we're in as a counselor. Um, also looks at universal principles. And so it takes the ACA code of ethics, the preamble that identifies six principles um, and how they relate to um, the, uh, what is it, the British, um, I'm trying to find the name of it. Oh my, the British Association for Counseling and Psychotherapy. So their, their, um, their framework as well. And so it shows the way that those overlap and the, the specific things that, that um, are kind of across the board. And so the first is justice. Second is autonomy. Um, now, um, non-maleficence, beneficence, um, fidelity or trustfulness, um, transcultural, and then it discusses the trans cultural applications of those um, foundational principles and, and how we can use them. So again, being ethical um, clinicians, we would be using those six, um, those six areas of uh, ethical work anyway. Um, and so how do we use those specific things in, in our work as social justice, justice agents? Um, this chapter also discusses navigating the intersection between um, culture and ethics because, you know, especially when we're in other, you know, countries or working with individuals that may be from other countries, there's going to be a big difference in what's considered ethical and it goes into different examples and, and things like that. Um, and it also breaks it down into different areas such as confidentiality and privacy and the ways that they, those might be defined differently. Be, oh, boundaries is the first one, excuse me, boundaries. Um, and the ways in which they may be different um, based on cultural background and things like that, confidentiality and privacy, assessment and diagnosis, which diagnosis we kind of talked about already, but we're gonna to continue to talk about um, next week and the way in which um, cultural factors um, really need to be taken into account with the diagnosis. Um, technology, which obviously is a growing um, part of our profession, and then also um, counselor education and supervision and some of the ways that we can work on um, increasing our global literacy is to read widely. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons that there is an assignment this semester to choose your own reading, um, because that's going to be an important thing for you to do as you move forward. Um, spend time out of class with international students in your program and being able to connect with people of different identities and backgrounds and being able to have those conversations. Take advantage of opportunities to travel if you can. Um, join international professional associations again if you can. Um, the um, attend conferences and community events. Those, those are wonderful and great opportunities to network and connect with people different than yourselves. And self monitor, which is something that, you know, I'm just gonna like be beating a dead horse this semester on increasing your ability to have self awareness. Again, the end of the chapter has a lot of references. And then the final um, chapter that we're gonna go over this week in um, this text is um, chapter 15, which is the last chapter in the textbook called Final Thoughts. The counselor as um, agent of social justice, the process of becoming. And so um, I love each, each chapter starts off with a quote. And this one is, um, I am because we are. And because we are, therefore I am. And it's um, a West African saying. And I really love um, how that in, encapsulates, you know, the, the, the information in this, in this text. And so, um, it, this chapter just kind of pulls um, a lot of the things together and the ways in which working towards social justice is a, um, a, um, a shared journey um, between all of us um, and the ways that we can kind of work on that together. Um, and then it identifies personal action steps, things that you could actually use to incorporate in your plan, um, you know, part B of um, your portfolio. Um, explore life's meanings and commitment. Explore personal privilege. Explore the nature, nature of oppression. Strive for multicultural competence. 
work to become globally literate, establish a personal social justice compass, and that is it. So those are definitely areas that you can include in your plan. Um, of course, your plan, I want it to be very specific about what you're gonna do, but this gives you some good ideas. Um, the chapter conclu concludes with a conclusion and also a final reflection um, by an individual um, who was a, a prominent pastor and outspoken public foe of Adolf Hitler, um, who ended up spending, um, um, who spent the last seven years of Nazi rule in concentration camps. And so he says, first they came for socialists, but I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. And so, you know, I've, I've heard this a number of times and it really reflects um, the ways in which we need to stand up and um, and speak out for others um, and not make it an issue of, you know, this is not my issue, this is not my concern, um, but being able and willing to step up when we can. And of course, you know, that can take a toll on us and also can put us in um, precarious situations. Um, and so obviously, you know, safety considerations and things like that, but, um, you know, as we talked about with intersectionality, being able to use the privileged identities that we have. And, and for those of you in this class, it's gonna be your um, your status as a graduate student and um, eventually an individual who holds master's level education. Um, that's gonna offer you some opportunities um, that not everyone has. And so maybe you can use those platforms. Um, we can use those platforms um, to do the work. And so that is it for the reading for this week. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.